Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today, let's talk a little bit about the school shootings uh, and what I think would be a viable solution because obviously nobody wants uh, to see children being hurt in schools. I've got small kids in schools, uh, so this is a very important uh, issue to me. Um, so in order to understand what's happening, we first have to understand human nature, okay? Humans are inherently violent okay that's our nature i mean uh humans are at the top of the food chain for a reason because we are the most violent uh, beings on this planet okay so um and, and this has been going on now for thousands and thousands of years right the people that have survived uh, in general are the most violent okay and they keep passing on that trait okay um so so that's the first thing we gotta understand right that that humans are inherently violent we have to understand this and we have to learn how to deal with this okay uh which is not something new all right this is something that we've been dealing with uh for a long time because it's just how humans are so uh, i mean i've got small kids from the time that these kids were able to walk okay got three of them uh all they want to do is fight with each other they want to hit each other they want to be violent okay it's it's in the dna you can't stop it they've inherited it from me and my wife who you know of course i've inherited uh, down for many generations uh but that's one of the things that you can do you can watch small kids who don't even know how to talk yet right who are just you know getting comfortable on their feet uh and if you put a bunch of toddlers together long enough uh, you will see that they want to hit each other. Okay, that's that's what they do. Um, so, um, my job as a parent, okay, is to teach my children how to deal with their natural violence. Okay, so, uh, you know, so basically we discipline them. And one of the tools that we use is sports, okay, because sports are combative. Okay, most sports, okay, um, you know resemble some type of warfare right even if it's something like basketball right let's say where you're just trying to put a ball through a hoop but you're using tactics of you know getting into position boxing people out you know um so so most sports that we do uh in some way resemble uh combat uh which is the reason why they are interesting to us okay uh, also the entertainment that we mostly watch okay a lot of it is very violent okay now uh, one of the things that, and I've said this before, that that us watching a movie that depicts what we call an action movie, right? That depicts some type of violence, uh, people getting killed, is really no different than sitting in a Roman Colosseum uh, some two thousand years ago, uh, watching you know people getting eaten by wild animals, uh, getting killed for real. Because his, now you might say, no, that, you know, that was real people dying and this is uh, fake people dying, right? But the thing to understand with, um, uh, with the entertainment industry, how successful a, a movie is uh, depends on the director's ability to convince you, right, that what you're seeing is actually happening. So a, a good movie, right, is one that basically kind of gets inside of us. We believe that we're actually there. We're attached to the characters. When one of them is hurt or threatened, we feel it, right? So at that moment in our mind, okay, people are actually dying. That's how our mind uh, interprets it. So our, our mind is being fooled into believing that those people are people are really dying uh, in an action movie, right? Um, but so, so psychologically, internally, the same thing is going on, right? Whether uh, it's uh, uh, you're in the Roman Colosseum watching prisoners of war being executed, right? Because that's who a lot of the, the people were that, that were killed in a, uh, uh, in a Colosseum. And people were rooting for them to be killed, okay? Uh, because those were the bad guys. Those were prisoners of wars. So that's no different than us watching a violent movie where we're seeing the bad guy getting killed and we're all cheering from the same exact thing is happening uh, in our minds. Okay, so, so this is important because we got to understand uh, human nature, how the mind works, um, in order to understand what's going on with, uh, you know, in these, in, in some of these schools, which is like, I, I think, I, I think that people are just not like stopping to really understand what is going on. Okay. So the first thing that they got to understand, right, uh, if you're in the business of trying to solve this 
problem of school violence is understanding uh, that kids, from the time that they're able to walk, are naturally violent, okay? I've got three small kids, like I said before. They want, All they want to do, now they're older, right? Now they're like, uh, I've got a five-year-old, uh, an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, and all they do is fight with each other, and me and my wife have to kind of get in between them and, 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 and try to and discipline them, right? So that's our job as parents, to treat them to control their natural violence, okay? Uh, so what I think that you're seeing in schools with a lot of these active shooters, right, uh, with these school shooters is that, you know, especially when it's like kids on kids type of stuff, um, they, they have not gotten that discipline, okay, uh, which is essential, right, and it's, and it's hard, like it actually takes me and my wife full time, you know, dealing with the kids, trying to dis discipline them. Um, if it was just my wife alone or just me alone, I think that that would be an almost impossible task uh, to try and, um, you know, and basically try to get like try to get that that natural violence that our kids have under some type of control. So it, it, it's, uh, it's it takes an effort of two people. Right. And it's still very, very difficult. So to me, I look at a lot of these other families, right, where it's like single mother, single father, you know, um, and I, I, I mean, I, I see it as an almost impossible task. Okay, um, so you know, I'm, so I think that that is the starting point. The, the real problem that we're seeing with a lot of these, uh, I think, the, the most common thread that I think that we will find with a lot of these um, school shootings is that they come from a broken family, uh, an, un, an undisciplined family, a, a family that hasn't taught them how to deal with their violent tendencies, with the difficulties uh, that, that develop through life. Um, you know, a lot of times people were saying, hey, you know, this, you know, this happened in school and they were bullied and that and that, but that's real life, man. You know, they have to be taught how to deal with those difficulties that arise because kids will tease each other, right? They will be a certain amount of bullying. I mean, I mean, I, I was in school too, man. I mean, you know, that, that, that's just how, that's, Part of going through that process of, of growing up um, and kids need to be taught how to deal with it okay so so part of the reason why I think we're having a lot of these these school shootings is because uh, the kids are not being taught how to deal with the difficulties uh, and they're not being taught how to control the natural violence that they have uh, inherited okay so uh, if you guys watch my channel, you guys know that that I, almost all the activities that I participate um, are are violence based. All right. So uh, and, and it's not the shooting. Right? When you guys see me here, see me here at the shooting range shooting, that's relaxing, man, because that's not violence. I'm just shooting. I'm just shooting at a steel target that's not shooting back. I mean, that's just having fun. That's, you know, that's like, you know, uh, that's not, that's not violence. The violence when you, is when you guys see me in armor, okay, um, you know, hitting other people with clubs, okay? So, and I'm 52 years old, okay? So at 52 years old, you know, for me to still be doing this, right? Uh, you can understand, you know, that can give you some type of idea of the inner drive, right? Uh, that I have, right? So that, so for a lot of, probably 20% of society, I mean, they had, they don't have, they haven't in, inherited any of that, uh, any of that violence, right? So, you know, there's, there's, there's tw probably about 10 to 20% of society that can't, um, can't understand of anything of what I'm saying, right? It's just, it's just completely foreign to them, okay? And then you probably got, I don't know, maybe a 60% in the middle uh, that has inherited a, you know, a, a normal amount of that violency trait, right? Um, and usually, when they're younger, they get involved with sports, right, as a way to, uh, to you know, to to, to vent that, that those natural tendencies. Uh, usually, by the time they get into their mid thirties, that kind of fizzles out a little bit, right? Testosterone levels drop, okay, after they get into their thirties, you know, into the mid thirties. Certainly, by the time they're approaching forties, about sixty percent of of, of people turned into couch potatoes, right? So, so you know, now I'm part of the 20% that's like at the far end where I'm like 52 years old and I'm still going hardcore, man. And here's the thing, at 52 years old, yeah, I still got the aches and pains of a 52 year old man, okay? But I mean, the drive to fight is just, is overwhelming, okay? I've, like I've actually, 
you know, I had one, there was one situation where I woke up and I had a terrible backache and I could like barely, like I was using the rails to try and get up the stairs, but it was a fighting day, man. It was a day that I had scheduled to go and get into armor and fight. And, uh, and you know what I did? I mean, the, the drive to fight was so overwhelming that despite having a backache, I went to the practice, got in armor, right? And it was almost painful getting into armor, right? And then I started fighting, okay? But once I started fighting, that adrenaline kicked in and the, the endorphins and the, and, 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 and the painkillers because the adrenal glands release painkillers. And all of a sudden that, you know, that pain in my back, it wasn't, it didn't matter so much. What was more important was hitting the guy in front of me, okay? So, so the point I'm trying to make is there's probably a 20% of society, right, that is hyper-violent, okay? Well past, you know, their 50s, okay? Um, and there's ways to deal with it, you know, through sports, through, through combat sports. There's ways to deal with it. And these are the things that need to be taught to the kids so that they can learn to deal with these uh, natural uh, you know, violent tendencies that we have as humans that we have inherited over, over, you know, thousands of years. Okay. Um, now how do we actually deal with the problem? Right? Because again, now, okay, fine. That's the explanation. So now you got this problem. Okay. There's only one way, uh, to deal with violence and that is with better violence. Okay. Uh, you know, you got these people that want to do harm, right? And, uh, they, they, you know, let's say they're entering a school. The only way to counter that is with better violence okay at, at that moment at that particular moment right because the, the part about training them and disciplining them and teaching them to deal that's all failed right that's failed that's you know we're past that that's failed so at that moment when somebody enters a school right or, or some other type of, of, of you know or something else right or someplace else and they're there to hurt people right the only way to counter that okay is with immediate counter violence and that and i say immediate that doesn't mean call the police and wait you know five to ten minutes for them to show up it has to be immediate by the people that are there um so in the case of a school uh it has to be the staff okay now yes i, I understand that not all people are suited to carrying and training with guns but a, a good chunk of the staff first of all they own guns they especially in a state like this like pennsylvania they carry guns anyway right it's just that when they get to work they can't bring it you know they can't bring it to work with them but they can take it to the supermarket okay so people that are carrying guns anyway or would be carrying guns anyway uh, those people should be allowed to bring the guns into the school so if there is a problem right um if the, you know that requires you know, if there's a violent problem that requires immediate counter violence, right? Uh, they are there and they are ready. And they're not doing it so much to protect the kids. They're doing it to protect themselves. Okay. So that's the driving incentive. Okay. Um, if somebody comes into a building and it tries to kill you, your first thought is going to be to, def you know, stop them to kill, to, uh, stop them to protect yourself. Okay. Uh, and by stopping them and protecting yourself, uh, you're also protecting the other people that are there. So by allowing the school staff that would normally be carrying guns anyway, right, um, allowing them to, you know, to bring their guns to school just like they would to the supermarket on the weekend, right, um, if they need, if, if something happens where they basically are able to protect themselves, they're also protecting everybody else. They're also protecting the kids. Okay. Now, my school it does have armed security. However, it's not enough. Having one or two armed security guards is not enough because you don't know what's going to happen, where it's going to happen, uh, and you know you may have a situation where that one or two guards is just not mentally prepared that day. They're not fast enough. They're not in the right spot. Maybe they're in the bathroom. You know, whatever. Uh, it has to be more than just you know one or two armed uh, security personnel. Uh, it has to be it has to be the regular people that are there. Okay, um, you know people that normally have carry permits, uh, you know, and carry guns wherever they go. They should be allowed to enter a school uh, or enter a federal building for that matter. You know, uh, the way they and just normally go about their business the way they would normally go about their business. Okay, so uh, a couple of things for you guys to, to think about, uh, and not just think about, but also I want to give you guys this information so that. You can kind of like, you know, uh, think about it and, and, you know, talk about it with other people, right? Um, you know, and, and, and the starting point of this is understanding human nature. 
what are humans? They are super violent, right? That's why we are the top predators on this planet, okay? Uh, that's why we're at the top of the food chain. We are super violent. And you can't just switch that off because you now put people uh, in a cubicle or in a classroom, okay? That, that violent trait is, is still going to be there. Uh, it's just that, that people have to be trained on how to deal with that violent, violent trait, that violent survival trait, right? Because if we didn't have that violent survival trait, we wouldn't be alive today, okay? Um, so they have to be able to manage that violent survival trait that they have, okay? Now, at the point where, okay, the training and the discipline break, you know, doesn't work, it was never done, and you're presented with a person that wants to harm people, the only answer to violence is superior counter violence, okay? So, some things for you guys to think about. Drop some comments below, and I'll talk to you all soon.